Next week in your Far Northern News on Win, your complete coverage of the state election. Who'll be representing the Far North and who'll be governing Queensland? That's next week in your local news, Win News, weeknights at 6. Tonight on Win, our world's none of more adventures. 7.30, 60 minutes. And at 8.30, a powerful romantic epic, a respectable trade. You cannot ignore 20 or 22 or 25 per cent of the electorate. And I think we did the right thing and I'm proud of what we did. My heart's with this country and with the people out there and they, all they want is a fair go. Queensland's cliffhanger election, state in turmoil as the struggle for power continues. Good evening. The Australian political landscape is forever changed tonight after Queensland proved fertile ground for Pauline Hanson's One Nation. From nothing, the fledgling party has grown into a massive political force, polling 25% of the primary vote across the state and winning at least nine seats. As to who will form government, that could take weeks to determine. The night of Pauline Hanson's dreams began the moment the first votes appeared. This is getting very, very messy already, but you've got to say, One Nation is doing very, very well. It only got better for Pauline and much worse for both major parties. And rejoice they did as seat by seat they fell to One Nation, Joe Bielke Peterson's old haunt of Baramba, the labour marginals of Harvey Bay, Mariborra, Thurungawa, Caboolture, even Ipswich West. The woman who started it all entered the tally room three hours before the others, vindicated and all but victorious. The Queensland people, the grassroots people, they've listened. But it was, a, it was constantly the media and everyone putting me down. The bloodshed continued, the safe national seat of Lockyer, now One Nation, as well as Burnett and Burdekin. Labor picked up Greenslopes and Mundingborough from Frank Tanti. People want to see average people as politicians. Also Mount Omini, handed over by the Liberals. The Liberal vote has collapsed there, down 15%. That's a, that's a huge drop in the Liberal vote. Even Police Minister Russell Cooper looked shaky but held on. It seems Russell Cooper, it's quite strange, is going to use the ALP's preferences to get across the line. Speaker Neil Turner's future hangs in the balance, as does Families Minister Naomi Wilson and Attorney General Denver Beanland. I endeavoured to warn them. Uh, my warnings have been ignored. The Party officials on both sides were reminded of 1995. They've got a cricket bat for most of us tonight as well. Nothing but bouquets from Sir Joe when he started talking to his favourite subject. Congratulations. It will shake the Australian political scene as nothing has shaken, shaken, shaken it before. Joe, thank you very much for that. I thank really do appreciate it. One Nation state leader Heather Hill joined the celebrations even though she lost. It's been a team. Yep. And it's been fun. <laughs> the message to Canberra loud and clear. The problem with John Howard is when he, talk, when he called me deranged, he was actually calling the majority of Queenslanders deranged, not in Queenslanders but Australians, and you don't do that. Already there's a split in the federal coalition. I'm just getting the impression that John hasn't got the message at all. They do not provide any answers, and you must address the answers to these questions. And mate, you are dead wrong. Peter Beattie surfaced, still defending the preferences decision which saw One Nation win seats from Labor, and may have cost him the premiership. But the principal stand we made in relation to One Nation was the right thing to do. If Labor doesn't fall over the line, it'll be a three-way conservative coalition. You cannot ignore 20 or 22 or 25 per cent of the electorate. There was a plea for One Nation to support his government. And I, I don't think there's any doubt that they'll do that. With 11 seats still undecided, there's a chance One Nation will end up holding more seats in Parliament than the Liberal Party. A far cry from the Premier's prediction during the campaign that One Nation wouldn't win anything. From the woman touted as the party's new state leader, a taste of things to come. That we believe people deserve the right to defend themselves and have the right to have a firearm, yes. Melanie Wendt, National 9 News. The question now occupying the minds of key players from all sides is where to from here? Labor hasn't given up on getting across the line, while Rob Borbidge has positioned himself to continue as Premier with One Nation's support. Like the rest of us, they're waiting for the dust to settle. 
The Premier and the Liberal leader weren't showing today. However, Labour's Peter Beattie is hopeful a hung Parliament can be avoided and he will become Premier. We can either just fall short or just get over the line, Laurie. It's very close. Labour needs to win two of these five seats to secure a one-seat majority and government again. If Mr Beattie falls short, attention could switch to the Sunshine Coast seat of Nicklin, where the Nationals' Neil Turner could lose to an independent. Independent Peter Wellington was on hand this morning, closely watching the recheck and votes count. If Mr Wellington gets up, Beattie is ready to talk. His plea, simple. And I'd be saying to any uh, person in that position, stability is important, and only we can offer that stability. While Wellington, a solicitor, was once a Liberal and a National Party member, he wants a stable government formed and would consider all arguments. I can assure you that uh, the people who voted for me in Nicklin want to see me make a responsible decision, and they don't want to go back to the polls tomorrow. After talking to scrutineers this afternoon, Labor's State Secretary Mike Kaiser was looking to get over the line. Well, I believe we've got a 50-50 chance or marginally better than that. But... The big loser from all the tumult is the Liberal Party. It is facing a loss of seven of its 15 seats after a massive fall in voter support, especially in Brisbane. Attorney General Denver Beanland is staring at defeat and within party ranks there's already talk of Joan Sheldon being replaced. Party President we're, we're Bob Carroll is in for a torrid time too. Labour quick to fan the flames. She deserted her party, she betrayed her party, she spent her whole campaign shoring up the National Party's heartland. Canberra is watching with trepidation. In a statement, the Prime Minister said, One nation's strong showing is no reason to abandon or modify such things as taxation reform. I think that this result will do us a deal of damage internationally. I think that this result will do us a deal of damage in our internal cohesion. However, One Nation's leader basked in the new party's first up showing at home on her cattle property. New South Wales seats now in her sights. Many parts of New South Wales are very strong. One Nation support, especially in rural New South Wales. The man who could order a new election if no side gets sufficient numbers, Governor Peter Arneson, was not commenting on busy times ahead. No, I'm not doing anything. Major. Spencer Jolly, National Nine News. There'll be a lot of new faces in the new parliament. Up to a dozen will belong to One Nation. While party leader Heather Hill missed out, others came from the political shadows to score historic victories. Who are these people who've rocked the state's political foundation to its very core? The nine, possibly more, George Street Greenskins who'll be striding the corridors of power. They range from Mr and Mrs Everyday to professionals like John Kingston, a vet and pharmacist who took Maryborough. But they all have a common theme. One nation has tended to listen to people. Political babes in the woods who bankrupted the political fortunes of some high flyers, rising to fame on platforms of stopping Aboriginal funding, overturning gun laws and stripping money from the arts. Most say they're just down-to-earth Queenslanders who now have their turn to set things right. Sir Joe's old seat of Baramba was lost by former minister Trevor Perrott to One Nation's Dolly Pratt, a coffee lounge proprietor. I'm going to represent the people, which is what the uh, present-day parliamentarians have forgotten. The new MP who forgot his razor is Ken Turner, a fisherman who, naturally, plays Santa Claus at Christmas time. I think it's the fact that we, we're a people's party and we've listened to the people. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Papp kissed goodbye to the Labor Party in Ipswich West. The former police sergeant and car enthusiast had this for the knockers. Shiny ass people, um, excuse the, the term, they will sit back and uh, with their university degrees, they're really not out here with the grassroots of the people. They're not at the coal face. Look out for these faces at your nearest Parliament House. Andrew Truen, National 9 News. Queensland's massive swing to One Nation is not only resounding around Australia, but overseas as well. Pictures of Pauline Hanson voting and the shock outcome have been splashed across the world. One Nation is making news in many countries. And a shift towards racist right-wing politics is emerging in Australia following today's state elections in Queensland. Most reports took the racist line. Her One Nation Party opposes Asian immigration and welfare for Aborigines. In America, broadcasts inferred Australia's reputation as a tolerant nation had been damaged by the poll result. 
In Australia, voters in the state of Queensland have shocked the country by voting politician Pauline Hanson's controversial One Nation Party into office. Different place, different medium, newspapers in Taiwan have a fresh headline. Back home and a diplomat from Japan was being, well, diplomatic about fears Pauline Hanson's ascendancy could impact on relations with Asia. There are people who have different opinions and that is natural and quite all right. To the woman on centre stage, it's all just tomorrow's fish and chips wrappings. Tell me one thing that I have ever said that is racist. Neil Dawley, National 9 News. Ahead, Andy Thomas in hospital after his return from space. And the yacht crew that's just stuck on surface paradise. Meet Ben Dark, an Aussie larrikin retracing the steps of our early pioneers with wide eyes and a 74 holder. Crossing the Nullarbor is one of the greatest road trips. Nullarbor Adventures, a breed of their own, tonight 6.30 on Winds Our World. Things have changed a lot since I retired. We've got more time to shop around. That's why we decided on Australian Pensioners Insurance. They offered lower rates and new for old replacement. But better still, they treat you like you count. If you're over 55 and no longer working full time, there is a company that gives you understanding, not just insurance. Call Australian Pensioners Insurance Agency. 24 hours, 7 days a week on 132 555. Quintrex, Australia's leading aluminium boat manufacturer. And still the greatest partnership on water. Quintrex and Bill's Marine Cans. Quintrex, quality and design built strong for Queensland. And the Quintrex range delivers the FedEx and best value for money. What about this for value? The Quintrex Explorer with all the gear, great family fun for only $30 a week. Quintrex boats are proudly Queensland made. And powered by the mighty Yamaha. What a partnership at Bill's Marine Cans. Phone 4051 6733. Can you be sure there are no white ants in the floor? Cockroaches galore. Rats and mice and more. Trust the Flick Man. He's your answer. Remember one flick and they're gone. Flick them. No emptying cupboards, no disruptions. Flick them. No danger to children or pets. Flick them. The Flick Way. The Sure Way. The Safe Way. Phone Flick now on 13 14 40. Remember one flick and they're gone. They are the newcomers to the NRL competition, and they've certainly made an impression. The Melbourne Storm. Be at Milanda Dairy Farmers Stadium to see one of the games of the season. The Cowboys versus Melbourne, Saturday night, June 20. Proudly brought to you by 102.3 40 FM and the History of Radio. We'll see you after the game at the Playpen Townsville. Tickets from the Civic Theatre Ticket Shop or your nearest Ampol Caltex outlet. From a time of suffering and survival... If you love me, go now. ...comes a story of destiny and dignity. I thought I'd see our baby come. If you had one chance of true love, would you take it? A respectable trade tonight, 8.30 on Wynn Television. Welcome back to National 9 News. A Gold Coast crew of a racing yacht Windjammer took sightseeing a little too far when their 65-footer caught on a sandbar close to shore. Surfers beachgoers watch bemused as water police tried to tow it free. Lifeguards say the yacht was sailing where board riders usually surf. They're just very, very adventurous in game. Um, I think they've had a very expensive learning curve, I think. They were last seen heading for the Southport Yacht Club. A semi-trailer driver died this morning after being crushed in the cabin of his overturned rig. The loaded semi left the main road into the Fisherman Islands Wharf and slammed into a power pole. Live power lines had to be disconnected as emergency crews worked to free the driver's body. The cause of the accident is still under investigation. Still feeling the effects of four months in space, Aussie astronaut Andy Thomas has been forced to miss his own welcome home party. But he's on the road to recovery. Today he walked for the first time since returning to Earth. A hero's welcome at NASA headquarters for the return of the Discovery crew minus Andy Thomas. 
NASA officials say the Aussie did not want to travel today because he's still nauseous and exhausted. That was shaky when I got off after only 10 days, so you can imagine what it's like for four months. After his 141 days in zero gravity, Andy told NASA officials he now feels as though he has weights strapped on his arms and legs. Late today, he did start walking. At the Houston ceremony, astronaut Mike Fole, who's also spent four months on Mir, he knows how tough it is for Andy right now. One thing you find is your muscles hurt. I mean, it's like being run over by a truck. In Adelaide, Andy's father is confident his son will soon be back to full health. I feel sure he'll make a, a quick recovery. Andy is scheduled to return to Houston and a similar welcome ceremony tomorrow. And after that for Andy, it'll be straight into a 45-day physical rehabilitation program. Nick McCallum, National 9 News, Houston. Now to sports in the Broncos pounced on the Panthers, Bomber. Mike Brisbane ended its mid-season drought thrashing Penrith and a big game for Wendell Saylor and the Lions get the next best thing to a win. The television preacher giving false hope. Jesus, we Australians are flocking to his crusades. It's just like a stage artist. Now we expose him as a fake. If you think I can fool all those people. I know that I'm here. Tonight on 60 Minutes. Beautify your outdoor living area with timber decking from Patio World. Great for entertaining or just lounging around. Phone 403 2116 for a free quotation and design advice. Patio World, creating a better lifestyle for Patio you. Patio World. You'll find smashing savings at Harris Garth Sensational Stock Take Sale. Buy quality impressions bed linen up to 50% off. And home statements quilt cover sets now just $29.95 each. Like it, charge it at Harris Garth Sensational Stock Take Sale. Eagle Boys Value for Money Test. The ultimate family feast. Two large pizzas, 1.25 litre Pepsi. Gully bread. Chicken wings. Only $18.95 pick up. Eagle Boys, 13, 14, 33. It's your call. Introducing a whole new world, where a curling iron is now good for your hair. Where the blast of a blow dryer makes your hair look healthier and feel silkier. This is the world of new Sunsilk Heat Activated. The only shampoos and conditioners with a revolutionary protein formula that's turned on by heat. To actually improve the condition of your hair. And nothing looks more amazing than that. New Sunsilk Heat Activated. Now the touch of heat brings the touch of silk. The one certain thing about going north in Australia is that the further north you get, the further north you want to go. Escape with the Escape Artists, on now at Cairns Regional Gallery. Wind news number one in the far north. Attorney General Denver Beanland ordering the case be reopened. This inquest should have been really number one because the first one was just a big balls up. Wind news weeknights at six. Good evening. Even before the team medical in Sydney tonight, a knee injury has forced Queensland reserve Brad Thorne out of Origin 3. Fellow Bronco Andrew G, his replacement. In the Premiership, Norths defeated Canberra. St George held off North Queensland. The Chargers ended a five-match losing streak. Balmain accounted for Illawarra, while Newcastle struggled home against Canterbury. Shrouded in controversy because of an alleged positive drug test, Knights fullback Robbie O'Davis sought sanctuary at Marathon. But he sent shutters through the Maroons camp, leaving the field midway through the second half. Owen Craigie scoring two late tries for Newcastle to win 12-4. And Craigie's going to race away. At North Sydney Oval, Ricky Stewart made a welcome return from serious illness, but his Raiders were no match for the Grizzly Bears. Oh, Taylor gets it back for Aiken, Aiken's over. Laurie Daly on report for a high tackle in Canberra's 34-22 loss. At the stadium, the Chargers relegated South to the bottom of the ladder with a 16-14 victory. The Bunnies now without a win in eight outings. Last night, the Broncos returned to top form, thrashing the Panthers 44-4 at Penrith Stadium. 
Brisbane ran in eight tries to nil in a confidence booster. Wendell Saylor finished with a hat trick. He's going to go 80 metres possibly again and score his third try of the night. It was the Broncos' second win in six outings. The coach relieved the nine Queensland Origin players escaped injury. No, that's really good. We got everyone through tonight um, and I managed to give someone a bit of a rest uh, as well. So, you know, everything's looking good. Not so good for Penrith. Their woes compounded by the late sending off of Gordon Falcon for a high tackle. At Parramatta Stadium, the Eels held off a late manly challenge to win 17-14. He's got support inside now and Shane Warrick will score for the Eels. And at Olympic Park, Melbourne disposed of Adelaide 24-4. One of Storm's four tries going to crowd favourite Marcus Byrne. A heart-stopping coaching debut for Roger Merritt as the Brisbane Lions and Port Adelaide drew at the Gabba this afternoon. Elsewhere, St Kilda were too strong for Collingwood, Richmond trounced North and the Bulldogs beat the Dockers. Four goals in the last ten minutes saw the Lions snatch a draw with power. A new coach in the box perched on top, Michael Voss back in town. The Lions with their best opening of the year, the lead 15 points at the first change. And Chris Scott does it nicely, well done the Lions. The visitors hit back and had their noses in front six minutes before half time. The Lions though always a chance with Daryl White part of the action. Two spectacular grabs and a goal on the siren had Brisbane eight point leaders at the long break. Here he is. Port switched that around and led by seven points at the last change, stretching that to 26 midway through the final term. Brisbane's desperation in the run home, though, a revelation. Four unanswered goals saw the scores level with just 14 seconds left. Hart, The teams locked together on 123 points at the final siren. Steve Haddon, National 9 News. In rugby, the Wallabies posted their highest score and biggest winning margin over Scotland last night, but coach Rod McQueen believes the scoreline flattered Australia. The Aussies ran in five unanswered tries, defeating the Scots 45-3 at the Sydney Football Stadium. Bound as one clan, Scotland's pre-game gathering gave all the signs of a tougher test than last week's whitewash of England. Nothing brave-hearted about Scott Murray tripping Stephen Larkham, the second rower yellow-carded for bringing down Australia's new 5'8". As usual, John Eels dominated line-outs, poaching plenty of Scotland's ball, but despite a glut of possession and two penalty goals, the Wallabies only broke the Scots' defence late in the first half. Daniel Herbert's brilliant counter-attack coming off Phil Kearns for Tim Horan. Australia ahead 13-3 at half-time. Joe Roth reckoned the best way through was over the top. He wants the bounce. He gets it. Joe Roth. Matthew Bird. At the scrum base, reserve Willie offer Hengawe had an immediate impact. Burks inside. Tune picks up. Tune dived across for a double once the Scottish defence faded. David Wilson also rewarded in his 50th test as the Wallabies racked up a record against Scotland. But the coach believed the 42-point margin flattered Australia. We're well aware of that. It's amazing uh, what a bit of extra pressure does. Andrew McKinlay, National 9 News. A spectacular goal by Nigeria has highlighted day four action at the World Cup. In other games, Mexico beat South Korea. The Netherlands and Belgium ended scoreless, while Nigeria surprised Spain 3-2. The, the signs were there this cross. game would be a ripper. And Spain Kiki scored Kiki early. And it's a goal! Nigeria equalised soon after. And Apocho makes it 1-1. The Spaniards converted their dominance, Herrero finding Raul Kiki for a goal made Raul's at Real Madrid. Great goal by Raul! It's a great, great goal! Somehow Nigeria smuggled through an equaliser, thanks to Zubi Zareta's mishandling. Oh dear me. As Spain misfired at the other end, oh dear. Elise turned the match on its head. Oh, what a goal by Sunday Elise! A fantastic strike! Putting Nigeria top of its group. South Korea went a goal up. Round the wall. Oh! Thanks to a deflection from the Mexican wall. Blanco pulled out his party trick twice teasing the Asians. Oh, there it is again. We'll have to invent After it. the Mexicans equalised, yeah, Hernandez slotted them ahead, well, almost topping ahead. a teammate. It's got in. Full of it's vigour and confidence, the, the blonde Hernandez striker then exposed the a leaky goal. defence. The Netherlands missed an early chance against Belgium, 
in a goalless game, the talking point was the farcical dismissal it's of Dutchman Patrick Clivert for this. Well, it's, it's very soft stuff. It's handbags at 10 paces stuff, isn't it? <laughs> Charles Christian, National 9 News. In basketball, the Brisbane Bullets are through to the NBL semi-finals after thrashing the Melbourne Tigers this afternoon to wrap up the series 2-0. Brisbane burst out of the blocks, opening up a 14-point lead by quarter time. The margin was 16 by the main break, with Steve Woodbury and CJ Bruton in fine touch. Tigers star Andrew Gaze had an off day, and he could only look on as Brisbane powered away in the last two quarters. It's a wet build-up to Wimbledon, the women's semi-finals, a washout at Birmingham, while the men's remain incomplete at Queen's. Scott Draper leads Mark Woodford in the All-Australian semi and is just one game away from a finals appearance. That ends a busy day in sport. It certainly has been busy in a lot of ways, actually, <laughs> <Yes>. Bob. <laughs> Bill's results and this week's winning numbers are 6, 13, 19, 20, 29, 34, and the supplementary this week is 24. Weather for the week ahead is next. Then the groom who lets his mates choose his bride. World of knights and dragons, kings and sorcerers, a world where magic is real. You will believe in Merlin soon to win. This family didn't have a QHBR building inspection report done before buying their house. This family did. Buying a home is one of the most important decisions you'll make. Don't risk it. Buy with confidence. From only $150, Queensland-wide house and building reports will provide you with a written structural building report. A report by one of our licensed building inspectors could save you thousands of dollars. Phone QHBR, your number one local building inspection report company. 1-800-620-325. Pedders, straight advice, specialists you understand, and no bull. Hey! After 50 years engineering products to help Aussie cars ride, handle, perform and tow better, you can trust Pedders to establish what you really need. It's made us number one in shock absorbers, steering and suspension. So insist on the red bull. It ensures it's better at Pedders. And don't forget, no bull. Oh, Ralph! Your local Holden dealer is overstocked with Rodeos and they've all got to go before June 30. You can still buy Rodeo 4x4 turbo diesel one tonner from just $22,789. Tomorrow's Australians depend on us to protect and conserve our unique environment for their future. Many schools and community groups are working hard to protect their local environment. To recognise and reward their efforts, Reader's Digest has joined Taronga and Western Plains Zoos to create a national award scheme. A total of $25,000 is being offered to schools and communities for environmental projects. To enter the Reader's Digest Environment Awards 98, ring free call 1-800-817-626. Trapped under a boat. She's also in labour. Their only option, deliver her baby. Push, that's it. Underwater. Water rats Tuesday. Not so clear for the southeast today. The cloud cover providing no rain, but keeping the temperature range tight. A warmer than average 12 degrees in Brisbane overnight, with tops today in the low 20s. At the moment, it's 20 degrees with humidity on 73%. High cloud is spreading across inland areas, producing only patchy rain at this stage. On the chart, a large cold front is passing across the southern parts of the continent. Tomorrow, that should move east as a new high-pressure system develops over WA. Fine for Darwin, Perth, Sydney and Canberra tomorrow. Light rain in Adelaide and Hobart. Heavy rain and tops of just 13 in Alice Springs. But fine for North Queensland, 13 to 24 in Mackay, up to 29 in the Isa. 
More fine weather in central Queensland centres with tops between 24 and 26. In the southeast, mainly fine on the coasts and at Ipswich, fine in Toowoomba. And on the bay, southwest to southerly winds at 10 knots before an afternoon sea breeze. The forecast for Brisbane, fine but cloudy at times and 13 to 23 degrees. Then rain is expected on Tuesday, easing later in the week, then fine again perhaps on Saturday. But the rain will be a nice change, Mike? Certainly will. Thanks, Gillian. Everything was chosen ahead of time for a wedding in the United States, except the bride. Dave Weinlich was determined to get married today, so he let his family and friends choose his wife. Part of the deal, an on-the-spot wedding at a shopping centre. Out of the group of wannabe brides, Elizabeth Runsey was voted Mrs Wright. I feel great. I feel absolutely marvellous about Elizabeth. This is the most incredible day of my life, and I know it is for every bride, but I never imagined this happening to me. I'm just so happy. The bridesmaids were four other finalists in the race to win David's hand in marriage. He's taking potluck, isn't he? Oh, I guess it's like the election result. A bit like that, isn't it? That's the news this Sunday on what has been an historic weekend. All this week at six, we'll have the latest on the election outcome. Good night. Good night. affair how clean is your hotel room it might look spotless but what about those hidden germs fingernail clippings that's really disgusting the scientific tests on australia's hotels and motels we've got stains we've got hairs absolutely filthy with astounding results nearly grew the lid off the heat treaties plus the aussie quads fighting for their lives she really holds on doesn't she born four months early but getting stronger every day prepared to be a super dad i guess what i'm gonna have to be when nissan presents a current affair I wondered if I ever see a world where I could just be me, where love and life had quality, the way it ought to be. And I wondered if I ever fly so high that I'd be in the sky, and with you by my side. The sky would be in me Today I'll shed my broken wings Today I'll shine and sing Today I'll do the most amazing things I'll climb a tree At camp quality I'm free At camp quality A war between two families. You've got something that belongs to us, I guess. She's disgraced and embarrassed the family. Will test the bounds of loyalty. I need to know I can trust you now. It'll be the first time your head's been turned by a pretty smile. Good guys, bad guys. 9.30 Tuesday. Excalibur! Coming soon to win. Sam Neill, like you've never seen before. You will believe in the magic of Merlin. Tonight on Win, our world's none of more adventures. 7.30, 60 minutes, and at 8.30, the powerful romantic epic, A Respectable Trade.